module. You will be introduced to alternating current. We studied direct current earlier. Direct current does not change direction with time. However, most appliances in our daily lives run on voltages and currents that vary with time. A time varying voltage that varies like a sine function is called alternating voltage or AC voltage. And the current driven by it in a circuit is called alternating current or AC current. The term AC is actually universally used to refer to any electrical quantity that varies with time, just like simple harmonic motion that is related by a sine or a cosine to time. In circuit diagrams, AC voltage is denoted by a sinusoidal wave in a circle. Electrical energy supplied to consumers is transmitted and distributed through power grids as alternating current. AC is preferred to DC mainly because AC voltages can be easily and efficiently converted from lower to higher voltages and vice versa using transformers. Let us study what happens when an AC voltage source is connected in series to a resistor with resistance R. The potential difference provided by the AC source is expressed as V is equal to Vm sine omega t. Here, Vm represents the amplitude of the voltage and omega represents the angular frequency of the oscillations of the potential difference. Angular frequency omega should not be confused with frequency. For example, the AC voltage supplied to our households has a frequency of 50 Hz. This means the angular frequency is 100 pi radians per second. We can calculate the current passing through the resistor using Kirchhoff's loop rule. The algebraic sum of all the potential differences across various components in the circuit is equal to zero. A proper sign should be used for potential differences around the loop. Applying Kirchhoff's loop rule to the given circuit, we get Vm sin omega t minus ir is equal to zero. Where? Vm is the maximum potential difference offered by the AC source. Here, Vm sin omega t is the potential across the given voltage source. The second term IR is due to the fact that if a current of magnitude I passes through a resistor of resistance R, the potential fall across it can be denoted by the term IR. Solving this equation, we get the expression for current as I is equal to Vm by R into sine omega t. As the magnitude of the resistance of the resistor R is a constant, the equation is simplified to I is equal to Im sine omega t. Here, Im is the amplitude of the current denoted by the fraction Vm by R. The graph of the current passing through the resistor and the potential difference across it against time is as shown. Here we observe that the magnitude of the current flowing through the resistor and the voltage across the two ends of the resistor reach their maximum values at the same time. They also reach their respective minimum values at the same time. In fact, these values even reach zero at the same time. This implies that in a pure resistor, the current flowing through the resistor is in phase with the potential difference across it.
The fact that the current and voltage are in phase can be seen more clearly if we divide the instantaneous voltage V by the instantaneous current I. Therefore, the ratio of the instantaneous voltage V and instantaneous current I is a constant of magnitude R. This means that the ratio of voltage to current is constant. Hence, Ohm's law is valid in the case of resistances connected in a circuit with an AC voltage source. You have now reached the end of this module. In this module, you learned that a time varying voltage that varies like a sine function is called AC voltage. The current driven by an AC voltage is called AC current. AC is preferred to DC mainly because AC voltages can be easily and efficiently converted from lower to higher voltages and vice versa using transformers. In a pure resistor, the current flowing through the resistor is in phase with the potential difference across it. The ratio of the instantaneous voltage and instantaneous current in a resistor is constant.